right, my name is Ryan, and welcome to the Java Dog Woof 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 Boolean and Java lesson. We are going to get pumped up today with some Boolean inside Java, man. It's going to change your life. You're not going to walk out of the house ever again without thinking about this stuff. Okay, let's go ahead and roll into the lesson here. And check out my sweet graphics there. You like that? All right, so Boolean is actually named after a guy named George Boole, or Boole. I think it's just Boole. We'll call it Boole. That sounds kind of sophisticated. Okay, so Boole invented these things called Boolean. Boolean. He was a mathematician, and essentially it's boiling down to making decisions on whether something is true or false. We pretty much do this all the time if you think about it. Okay, we're always determining if things are true or if they're false. We're gonna do this, we're gonna do that. I'm hungry, so I'm gonna eat. If I'm not hungry, I'm not gonna eat, or maybe I will, I don't know. Okay, so the example I put over here is if X is true, do choice A. If false, then do choice B, okay? In some cases, choice B may be nothing. It may be just be a default where you don't do anything afterwards, okay? So the main thing is you understand that if something is true, you're going to do it, and we'll say it's choice A. If something's false, then we'll go do something else, whether that might be nothing. Okay, Boolean statements. These are going to be what we put inside Java, and this is when we kind of like, I guess the textbook terminology would be, it summarizes items into being either true or false, okay? And that's when, pretty much when you're putting it inside your code and spelling it out. Uh, we're just going to focus on the main Boolean operators. There's a... Um, it gets pretty complicated, but I'm just going to stick with the main ones here. Um, you'll see as you grow in your computer programming skills that there's more advanced Boolean operators than, uh, than what we got here, or mainly Boolean concepts. Okay, the main one, and, okay, so what we're saying is both conditions have to be true in order for you to perform an action. In our example down here, I wrote, so if x is greater than 9 and this variable I called bool1, like boolean1, okay, boolean1 is true and x is greater than 9 is true, if those are both true, then we're going to perform whatever code is inside the brackets right here, okay? That's all it's saying. If this is true and this is true, then we perform code. Just so you know, I only have two conditions I'm checking. If x is greater than 9 and bool one is true, okay? It could be all sorts of different conditions there. I could have multiple Boolean conditions. I got multiple uh, conditions where I'm checking to see if variables are greater, less than, or equal. I mean, it just you just never know, okay? Um, you'll see some of these um, Boolean statements where they get, you know, five or six different uh, conditions that they're trying to check, okay? For our purposes, I'm gonna stick to two. Maybe I'll sneak in a third one, you never know just depends on how much coffee I've been drinking. Okay, to boil down to the root essence of this, we're just saying if X is true and Y is true, both have to be true, then we'll perform choice A. If just one of these is false, if X is false and Y is true, that doesn't meet the AND condition, so we'll come down to choice B. Boolean operator or, it's represented by these two dash, or these two vertical lines right here. These are, located next to the backslash, okay? Which, on my keyboard, it's underneath a, uh, the backspace button, or it's part of the backspace, or excuse me, the button is with the backslash, which is right underneath the backspace button, okay? So the or, we're saying that one of the conditions must be true. So either x is greater than nine is true, or bool one is true. If just one of these is true, doesn't matter which one, then we'll perform this code. If they're both true, that's good. We'll store, still perform the code down here. If both of them are false, then we will not perform the code. Next, the XOR, I will not be using these, but it's worth noting. And what we're saying is with the XOR, it's this little caret symbol. I, You know what's funny? I used to know where that came from, and then, um, and then I forgot. Okay, so I guess that happens. So. This is called the caret symbol, and if you use a graphing calculator, you probably use this for exponents and whatnot. Um, so don't confuse exponents with this, even though technically we could use it for an exponent. 
and bit shifting and all this other kind of crazy stuff inside Java, uh, don't worry about that. Just know that in this particular example, it's meaning the X or. And what that says is if both these conditions are the same, then it's false. Okay, then we perform the code. Or excuse me. It, wow, man. I always hate the XOR. So if Boolean 1 is true, and Boolean 2 is true, based upon the XOR, that would make this condition false, okay? Because they're both the same. If Boolean 1 is false, and Boolean 2 is false, that would make this whole condition false as well, because they're both the same. If bool 1 is true, bool 2 is false, that makes them different. That means this condition is now true, and we can perform the code. So the main thing with XOR to remember is that they have to be different in order for it to be true. And you can, uh, you can have all sorts of different stuff, especially if you had like someone selecting certain, certain things out of a list of items, and different users are picking different things. Maybe it's a network program. You're like, if they pick this before the other person, make sure they're all different. They didn't pick them at the same time. You know, certain circumstances like that where everything has to be different whenever you're checking the condition. And the not. This is my favorite. Okay, so the not is the exclamation point. And what we're doing is we're just saying if x is not 9 and the Boolean 1 is not true. Boolean. Just remember the exclamation point means not. If it's not this, okay, that's just remember it's the 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 opposite of whatever it happens to be. Okay, we could say yeah, let's just roll with that, okay? Let's not make it too complicated here. Um uh, there's other ways to write the not, and you'll see this as we go through our program. And last but not least, just some more essentials is when you declare a Boolean variable inside of Java, you'll spell out the word Boolean in front of it, and you'll declare it as public, private, protected, or something like that, and then give a variable name. Uh, here's an example right here. So Boolean, my book var, var is set to true. Okay? That's all you got to do. Just remember it's Boolean. Boolean. Spell it out all the way. I sometimes get confused because I do C sharp more than I do Java, so I um, always forget to spell out Boolean inside Java. So if you're used to C sharp and you just do a little bit differently, like the C sharp way, uh, just remember Java has to be Boolean all the way out. Okay, that goes to the end of my slideshow. Told you I'd keep it simple. And now we're going to jump into our Java program here. Welcome to the Boolean Game Engine Java file here. We're going to walk through this entire program. It's pretty simple. I would give a 4 on a scale of 1 to 10 on complexity for a new programmer. Nothing super complex. Okay, what I want you to see is just maybe creating a little uh, multiple choice game or an answer game by using some Booleans. And it's really hard to make a program based around nothing but Booleans without you know, putting in some other stuff. So I'll introduce you to some other items on the side here. So we're going to go to the very top, and then we'll uh, scroll all the way through from, well, we won't go from beginning to end. What I'll do is I'll explain things as we go, and then we'll jump to certain sections. Remember, when you're watching these videos, if you are not pausing the video and typing up and copying the instructions, you're missing out on an important lesson of learning how to program. Okay, there's physiological and kinesthetic skills associated with programming. Okay, typing is obviously physical, okay, so getting your hands used to typing up all the code and knowing where all the keys are, I mean, it all ties in together, okay? Not to mention all the encoding and decoding processes that happen in your brain, okay? So just remember those things. It's very much a psychological exercise as much as it is a logical exercise. Okay, I bet you never thought you would hear that out of a guy that started barking like a dog at the beginning of a video out here on YouTube. All right, first time ever, bet. Okay, nonetheless, so what we got going up here, lines one, two, and three, these are import statements. We're importing these packages into Java, or excuse me, into this file that we're making. They're already in Java. What we're doing is we're putting them inside our program. There's hundreds of these things out there. I just use the main ones for teaching with. Um, but if you go out and explore, you'll some, find much better ones than these that perform all sorts of cool stuff that make you look like a rock star. 
So we're going to import the scanner. Scanner is going to be used to get user input from the keyboard. Okay, I like it because it's nice and simple and it gets you ready for the AP test. Next, we are using this cool one called Input Mismatch Exception. And what this will do is it'll help us out if we've got somebody that presses the wrong key whenever we're trying to get user information. Uh, for example, if they're trying to, we're, we want them to type in their age and they accidentally hit a letter key or uh, maybe they're being silly and put in the uh, an emoji or something, you know. What this will do, it'll make sure that we get the correct information because if you don't have this and they put a letter in when you're expecting an integer or a double it's going to cause some errors with your program and this will help stop that from happening and allow us to keep moving next random we're importing the random package so we can make random numbers I guess it does what it says our public class file is going to be called Boolean Game Engine. We're only going to have one class in this. There's only going to be one file, and everything is going to run out of this single file right here. Before we go on, I'm going to quickly point out, I put some comments here in the program. These are notes to myself, and they're kind of notes for you as well. Um, what I did was I put these comments in locations where you will perform extension exercises based upon the PDF uh, rubric that I have available for you. So smash that like button, subscribe to this channel, tell your friends and family and your grandma, everybody you know. And if you got a dog or cat that can get on the internet, get them on there too. I really appreciate it. Okay, so you get the extension activity. These will kind of be like um, little clues as to where to put them. I didn't put them in the, out there as clues, but I left them out there as clues. Okay, it's just one of those. Uh, uh, I, I forgot what the term is I'm looking for. One of those um, weird conveniences, if you say. Okay, right here. All my variables, I'm making them public and static. I want you to go out and figure out why in the world do I have to declare all of these variables static. That's just kind of crazy. We didn't have to do that in the last one, did we? Hmm, wonder why. Okay, so you go figure that out. Public, I left these all as public. I'm sure there's some diehards out there thinking, you fool, putting them all public, it's going to corrupt data. What happens? Ah. All right, this is a small program. I'm keeping them as public just to make it nice and simple, okay? We're not trying to win any awards here. So our first one, it's a string, it's going to get the name from the user. Input one, input two, these will come from the scanner class right here, you can see that. Okay, and these will be used for different uh, purposes. I'll explain those when we get there. We got a Boolean called correct answer. We're automatically set it to false, just so that way we have a condition already stored in it. And again, there's some different philosophies out there. Maybe setting up your uh, variable with the condition already set, not declaring it in a myth method that gets uh, part of the um, initialization of the program. I'm just going to keep it real easy and declare it right at the very beginning. And then we have age. We'll get the user's age, how many rounds of the game they want to play, their score. Again, it's an integer. I set it to zero. Probably should put a space there so we don't look so sloppy. Let's save that change. Um, so the score keeps track of the score difficulty will keep track of the difficulty with a number and then right here we create a string called difficulty word and what we'll do is we'll assign a string value to this variable uh, difficulty word so that way when we have a uh, printout on the console we can tell the user what difficulty level they selected let's move here to our main method uh, again just kind of your standard main method Inside of it, we have a simple if condition, okay? We're going to say if game setup, this is another method, okay? This is a Boolean condition right here. We're waiting to see if this is true, okay? Now, this game setup, this method, which I'll show you in the next video, okay, is going to return a true value, okay? That's what's going on with this first line of code right here. We're getting a return, return value of Boolean to this if condition right here from this particular method. If this is true, then we come down here inside of our if statement and we're going to call the method called play game and that's going to run the game. Now if you type all this up in your program and you try to compile it, you're going to get a boatload of errors. That's because I haven't shown you all the rest of the Boolean game engine here. 
and I'm going to show that to you in the next video. So hold on tight. We will, or you hold, I guess there's nothing really to hold on to, but go and watch the next video. It's going to amaze and impress you. All right. My name's Ryan again. Thanks for watching the Boolean and Java video here on Discovertron. We'll see you in a second.